So somehow the Miata's alternator, this is the Miata NB, Mazda Speed, it's giving 15.43. It's supposed to give much lower, I would say like 14.5, 14.4. This is tend to be too high. And uh, on this car I'm running a um, MR2 electric steering assist pump. So but basically there's a, how do you say it, there's a electric pump but it goes into the hydraulic rack and pinion of the Miata. So this way you'll have the assist but you're not using the belt driving system to drive the power steering pump. You're using an electric pump instead. But it's currently not active because uh, it drains too much current. So we're gonna increase the um, the alternator output by putting a RX7 FD today. So here is the Mazda Speed. Um, I have a aftermarket intercooler, aftermarket radiator. Um, so I have to remove this tube right here in order to have more, much more access to the alternator. I actually got ripped off. It's not 10, it's 11. I'll just probably try to drop it from the, down below. And uh, this is the alternator on the Miata. It's the same thing for NA or NB. So there's a bolt we have to loosen right here. Just right here. It's a 14 millimeter. This is the longest bolt we have. And after that, we got a few more bolts to loosen. So we're gonna just loosen this one first. So I have loosened the, uh, the longest bolt on this job. It says 14. And we're gonna now loosen the others in order to loosen the belt first. Let's just try. Okay, it's fine. So I should be loosening right now. So we're just loosening it enough so we can slip out the belt. So this final 14 milliliter, milliliters was uh, kind of hard to, to remove. So I used the extension and then I used a socket with another extension to gain extra torque. Like this. Okay, the belt is slipping. Ouch! Everywhere is hot around here. So I really hate working on this car after I've driven it. And I haven't even driven it hard. That's the thing. I bought a brand new belt just in case uh, that this one sucks because um, sometimes it was slipping, slipping. I'm trying to inspect it. This seems fine. Oh, wait. No wonder why it was screaming sometimes. I don't know if you see it, but there's a rib. There's a rib right here that broke off. Just here. Oh, actually. Another part right here, I believe, yeah, Continental, and there was broken ribs, and this one, this one is the Bando, and I hope it's the same size. Oh, okay, it is, it is the same size, it's good, that's very good, and it seems higher quality, it has like a double, it seems to be thicker too. Or maybe it's just my imagination, sorry. It's just because I saw the white line. So we're gonna use the, the brand new one, obviously. So it's a good idea if you replace your alternator, might as well also replace that. So make sure you get your, your alternator supported with a box or something like this after you remove it. So I had enough space to drop it down from below. But if yours isn't turbocharged like mine, um, you won't have the oil cooler in the way, the, t the hoses of the oil cooler in the way, you won't have the intercooler in the way. It'll be so much easier for you. And this one is the aftermarket alternator. So the positive right here is a 13 milliliter. I realize um, that when, whenever your alternator is not uh, OEM, instead of 12, it's always like 13-ish. So it's freaking hot right here. I'm just trying to remove this. Might have to use my impact. Okay, no need. 
sorry if you can't see me loosen it. It's a, it's just a simple bolt. So there's like a plastic cover on it that you remove, and then you disconnect one of the connectors. You just press on it. It's really literally that easy. You just press on it. I send it somewhere. It's somewhere around here. Anyways, it's a, it's a beige. It's a beige-ish -ish connector. There's only one connector. And then this is your positive. Right here. You just loosen it. If you can't loosen it like this in the air, you can simply use a impact driver. So oh, I'm just losing it right now. So this one is the RX7 one. I got lucky actually. This one is the original one I believe or at least remanufactured maybe. Because it's um, it has a Mitsubishi tag on it. Which is better than this one. This one is a R&M. Tried to search it and it looks like a jobber-ish. Alternator. Make sure they look the same and whatnot. Oh, they do look the same. Sorry. So they do look the same, but not exactly the same. Right here, side by side. This one has more coolant. This one has a nicer cooler. Well, heat sink, sorry. And just by comparing, the coil seems bigger on the RX7 one. But duh, because the RX7 one obviously has better output. So now we're gonna try to transfer some stuff over it first from my alternator. Did you know what I realized? The person already cut the the this part right here for me because it's usually much thicker on the RX7, so I don't have to do the cutting. That's pretty cool. So I have grinded off this bracket here the one with the two sides I grind it off here cut it grind it as much as I can and then this side as well I grind it off oh and I have had big trouble finding a boat for the alternator in Canada Montreal so I went with a 3 8 16 and it's um, it works I rethread it to um, 3 8 16 but we, you're supposed to buy a M10 and uh, 1.25 that's what it's supposed to be but I couldn't find anywhere so this one is much longer and it goes in at least so it works because I rethread it but I strongly suggest you to have an M10 125 at least 100 uh, millimeters long also I have to cut this part or trim it it's currently blocking. So I installed back the 14 milliliter bolt on top for the adjuster and now we're, I'm trying to I slip back the belt and the part I showed you earlier that I cut it really did gain like a tiny 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 little bit just enough for me to gain much more clearance for the belt to slip in it did make a huge difference so so at the end it did work um, it took some a lot more modifications like grinding and cutting on the alternator than more than I thought but otherwise it works very well now I'm having around 14 uh, stable voltage charging around 14.8 and um, I used to have like 15.8 which was very high and it seems working working pretty well it just looking at it it looks stock so I hope it helped you guys and uh, on the NB I believe the actri uh, the alternator has a uh, has a voltage regulator 
built in and the ECU also has a voltage regulator. So I believe I have to play a bit with my, my Mega Squirt <laughs> because it also controls the out voltage output on it. And uh, I'll have it tuned uh, next week so um, stay tuned I'll see what we can do. I'm gonna increase my horsepower and uh, increase the PSI in a lower RPM. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys it helped you guys and thank you guys for watching and maybe subscribe or like the video. Thank you guys.